Amen. I'm going to ask uh, Sister Ezra to come lead us in another round of that. Amen. Amen. Victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, victory shall be mine. Amen. Let the Lord use you. First giving all praises to God, honor to my pastor. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle. Victory, victory shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle. Victory, victory shall be members and friends and sinners if there be any. Certainly we are grateful to God for another opportunity to serve on this program. How many know today if you hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle, victory will be yours. Let us pray and then we'll move into the word of our Christ. Oh, gracious God, our Father, we thank you now that if we hold our peace, uh, you will fight our battle and the victory will be ours. Lord God, our Father, we come now asking that you would meet us in this preaching hour. We ask, oh God, that you would strengthen us, guide us, keep us, remove anything that should not be and have thine own way. Speak to your people, Lord and we will hear, speak, and we will listen. Bless this church, bless our pastor. Help us, Lord God, in that right earth. For no other help we know, if you withdraw yourself from us, whether shall we go? 
to whom shall we turn? Oh God, we thank you today, and we bless your name today, for you are worthy. Oh God, set the church on fire that the firemen cannot put out, burning on the inside that men would show some signs on the outside. Let it rain, Jesus. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you that you're already here. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 There's a word from the Lord found in the gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter and the 35th verse, and, and most of us should not uh, need our Bible for that. And I know an old preacher that's long gone say if I read a long passage, uh, don't get out your coat. But if I read a short passage, you may need to fix your lunch. So we may be here a little while. But I don't plan to trouble you long. If you, you will find these words, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Amen. If it be the will of God for a little while, I want to talk about Jesus wept. All right. Amen. Jesus wept. Now, I've told you about the old man that used to say, if I pull out that scripture, you know, pack your lunch, because we're going to be here a little while. <laughs> Amen. But I've heard uh, Brother Jakes go through this thing, and he said, loose that man and, and let him go. And sure enough, as we approach Mother's Day, men folks still need to be loose and let go. We're still struggling. We're still falling down on the job. The pastor talked about seven men of good report and full of the Holy Ghost and got wisdom. Where are they today? Our world stands in, in, in trouble, and, and we need men to stand up and be counted for righteousness' sake. And then Brother Freddie Haynes of the Friendship West talked about hurting sisters and sick brothers. And, and sisters are hurting because the brothers are sick, the brothers are struggling. Back in the day when we were growing up, even the fellas that wouldn't do right would say, little fella, get on away from here. And don't do as I do, do as I say do. And men were men, and when they spoke, they didn't tell you but one time in my mama day and maybe two times in my day, and then after that you got dealt with. Now folk tell you four, five times, and then the children won't tell you what to do. What a world we live in. And so men, folk, need to stand up and be men. Where's that band of men whose heart have been touched by God, who understand and know the time? And, and, and like I say, even in our community, the, 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 the church men stood up, even the center men stood up, and children had to be children and stay in their place, and... Women had to be women and stay in their place, and, and we were blessed. Pastor Monroe the other day said up in the 50s and 60s and 70s, we had a good job, and black men, we were on our way. But then they put dope and other stuff into our community, and, and, and from 80s, 90s, 2000s, we've just been going downhill. And all that ground that we gained after having come out of slavery and reconstruction and sharecropping and, and segregation and desegregation and all that that we went through, where are we today? Some of us have made it and most of us have not made it. And Dr. King said injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And so just because you made it and used to be the preacher, the mailman, the teacher, and all them lived in the same community and we had it going on. But now we, we moved out here, there, and yonder, and everywhere. And then our children, we move away from this stuff, and, and, but they act like they back in the hood. They got earrings and tatted up and and all messed up in the mind, you could have stayed in the hood for freedom to go way out yonder to Plum Nelly and pay a whole bunch of money for your children to act like they're still back in the hood anyway. It's not what's on the outside, but it's what's on the inside. And, and we need to get this man in our, in our message today on the inside. If you, if you get Jesus on the inside and get in him something, the Bible said, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things are become brand new. But you know the story, don't you? Jesus and the boys were out of town and, and they were hanging out and Mary and Martha sent word and said, my brother Lazarus is sick and Jesus, you need to come. And, 
After a while, Jesus told the fellows, Lazarus is sleeping. They said, well, Lord, if he's asleep, let him go out on and rest. Let him, he's going to be all right if he gets some rest. And then Jesus said, no, he's dead. All right. And after a while, by and by, they made their way to town. And those sisters said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And, and Jesus said, do you believe he can live? She said, Lord, I know he'll live on the other side in the resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection, the truth and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. But sometimes we want a healing and God want to do a resurrection. And we just have to wait on him and give him time. And you can't hurry God. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. He already knew what he was going to do. He already worked it out. And so you have to trust him. You have to hold on to his unchanging hand. Healing may not be where it is. God may have to let that thing go all the way down and pick it back up. And then you know it wasn't nobody but him. Nobody but the Lord. For his will must be done. We have power, we can call on him, we can raise our hands to him, and he will answer prayer. I think my brother said sometimes he say yes, and sometimes he say no, and sometimes he say, wait a minute, but delay is not denial. Just hold on. The Lord is on his way. And when he gets there, he'll make a way out of no way. Matter of fact, the old preacher said when he finally went to work, he had to call Lazarus by name because if he just said, get up, the whole graveyard would have got up. Yes, yes, yes. Lazarus got up and them grave clothes had to loose him and let him go and, and he came forth. But the thing about it, Lazarus died again, but I know somebody. Uh, he died for your sins and my sins, but he arose on the third day and he's the first fruit from the dead because he didn't die again, he lived. You ask me how I know he lived because he lives within me. He walks with me. He talks with me. He lets me know that I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Who are you talking about, preacher? Well, we have a simple sentence here, a subject and a verb. The subject is Jesus and the verb is wept. And God can wept. He cried when he sees sin. He cried when the little sparrow died. He cried over his children. He weep over Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, I weep over you. He cried on the cross and said, it is finished. We want to be hard and bad and don't want to cry, but Jesus wept. And if Jesus had cried, I can cry. If Jesus had to cry, I'm going to have to cry sometime. But the Lord will wipe all tears from your eyes. You just have to put your hands in his unchanging hand. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. It is what it is, but Brother Rowden said it don't have to stay that way. And so just because I'm over here now, I don't have to be over there tomorrow. I can just keep on keeping on in the name of the Lord. The Lord wept, the Lord have providence, the Lord have mercy, the Lord have grace. The Lord loves us and he, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Who are we that we can't cry? Who are we that we don't have any emotions? Who are we? If Jesus wept, we gonna have to cry. But, but he didn't cry because somebody hurt his feelings. He didn't cry because he got mad. He didn't cry because somebody mistreated him, but he was concerned about unbelief. He was concerned about sin. He was concerned about the conditions of the world. What in this world make you cry? Russia acting a fool. Chicago acting a fool. One of my co-workers, her sister got killed in gang violence up in Chicago after she left a rally from fighting against gang violence. The police said it was a drive-by. I said it was a hit. We're going to have to cry sometime. But I know somebody who can wipe the tears from your eyes. And that's the first part of this verse. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Mary's baby. Yes. Jesus a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Yes. Jesus a bright and morning star. Yes. Jesus the great I am that I am. Yes. Do you know him? Yes. Have you tried him? Yes. Ain't he all right? Yes. Won't he make a way? Yes. He said I am that I am. I'll be what you need me to be. Yes. When you need me to be, just put your hand in the Lord's hand. 
He's God and very God. He died for your sins and my sins. He spoke to the water and it became wine. He healed the blind. He made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. He satisfied and appeased the wrath of an almighty God. He paid for our sins. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. Do you know him? Won't he be a mother for you? Won't he be a father for you? He's bread and starving land. Water in dry places. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's God and very God. He's a good God. I